Okay, my loves. I know there are a lot of you that are out there that are really wondering how do I even set boundaries anymore. Maybe you didn't grow up with great boundaries. Maybe boundaries weren't really modeled well for you. Or maybe you were told that you cannot have boundaries. Maybe you're tired of being gaslighted in your relationships. And you're tired of feeling crazy all the time and guilty for trying to make a difference in your life. If this is you, then I want you to come schedule a call with me. Let's chat about the Unashamed Image Program. The Unashamed Image Program is geared towards you specifically. I am going to be helping you in our next upcoming session of the Unashamed Image. I am personally going to train you how to not feel crazy when someone is gaslighting you, how to be able to stand your ground, to keep your boundaries intact, and to also see through the bull crap. I am also going to be teaching you how to set really confident boundaries, boundaries that you can really rely on. And I'm going to help you communicate them in a way that really makes sense. Basically, I'm going to help you live a life free of shame, and on your terms. If you are ready and you are done feeling all the shame and guilt for trying to set boundaries, if you are not willing to live another moment the way you are right now and in somebody else's shadow, then this is the time to schedule that call with me It's completely free, no pressure, just love, just support. Go to www.erinandersonthetraumacoach.com. Scroll down the page to where it says, let's chat about working together. Click on that button and it'll take you to my booking page. If you're ready to live the unashamed life, schedule that call. Let's get you in the unashamed image program, my loves. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. I am so excited you are here. And we're actually doing a little shift this week. We are talking about gratitude instead of joy and or love and boundaries, I should say, as uh, I said we would from last episode, but um, where it's Thanksgiving week and we've got, um, you know, we're gathering together, I really want to discuss gratitude. I felt like that was really fitting for this week. So, and actually also a very big key It's one of the keys to unlocking your freedom from betrayal trauma, actually. And so this is a really good topic, really good topic to talk about. Um, So with that, let's let's just go ahead and jump in. And um, if you remember from episode two, The Relational Tears, um, you've got... Your relationship with God first, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others, your relationship with abundance. And then you've got that little tube that pumps water, that life-giving water, um, back in, back from the abundance uh, tier into the God tier. And that tube is gratitude. Because once you have something that gives you abundance, you tend to be grateful for it. Because usually abundance is something that has a positive connotation to it, right? I mean, if you guys have an abundance of money, that's a good feeling. We all like that feeling. If you have an abundance of love, same thing. We love those feelings. What if you have an abundance of joy, an abundance of good relationships, an abundance of friends, an abundance of uh, time that you happen to spend wisely? These are all things that bring us joy. (sighs) Sorry, guys, I am yawning a bit today. Um, 
so yeah, these are all things that bring us an abundance of joy and abundance of peace, love, all good things, all very good things. But what about an abundance of trials, an abundance of pain, an abundance of debt, an abundance of all of those things? How on earth can we be grateful for things like that? Um, and I've even had people go so far as to say it's not possible. You can't be grateful for things like that. Um, and I'm here to tell you it's not true. <laughs> and it's actually a key ingredient to your healing. It really is. Okay, so how? How is it a key ingredient to your healing and the things that you're trying to create in your life? To the goals, your relationship goals. How is it a key ingredient? Well, if you also remember me saying um, in a past episode that I don't believe in trials. I believe in miracles. And that every miracle I have ever witnessed in my life has always been painful at the beginning in some way or another. Um, For instance, you know, I'll give you some big fat for instances here. Uh, Just last Monday, it was two days ago, um, I have... I take my my children to piano. Um, they're learning to play the piano, and I think it's fabulous. I love it. I love that they're able to do these things. Um, but the piano teacher happens to live about 30 minutes away from me. And so we always pile in my car, drive on down to where the piano teacher is, take our lesson, and maybe stop off, get like a little treat on the way home, and then head home, do dinner, you know, I mean, we've got a whole routine schedule around these things. Um, But when it came time to leave, I realized that my husband had my daughter's, my two daughters' car seats in the back of his car, and he was an hour away from home and would not be there in time for me to, um, to get to get to piano with my girls. That wasn't going to happen. That definitely was not going to happen. Okay, well then, uh, what do we do? You know, I ended up having to call on family and ask them if they could possibly watch my girls while I took the boys to piano. And my sweet, fabulous sister-in-law, she totally, you know, stepped up to the plate for me and took over. And, um... So, as I get the girls down there, I realize that we are going to be about 15 minutes late, which I hate being late. Hate it. Um, but I, I decided it's important to keep going. Um, we've got a Christmas recital coming up, and these kids need the help of their teacher, and so, um... We pack up the boys and I start heading to the piano teacher's home. And as we get down around about um, Ephraim area, and some of you might not know where that is, but it's about 20 minutes away from my house. There is a huge pileup of cars. And if if you know where I live, that can only mean one thing, and it's usually not a good thing. It means that there's been a crash. And so, and if it's a huge, huge backup, huge, huge pileup of cars, usually means it's a pretty bad crash, and it definitely was. Um, and so we're stopped in traffic there. Before we got to the crash, too, um, I was stuck behind extremely slow people, and I couldn't pass them. And so I was feeling more and more frustrated with every moment because I was getting later and later and later for my kids' piano lessons, and I hate being late. Yeah, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. I want to be on time for things. I want to get to things on time. 
Um, I usually put things in my schedule for a half hour early to an hour, depending on where I need to go. So that way I can be there on time or early no matter what. Um, and uh, that was not happening. But then it dawned on me, as I'm sitting there stuck in this huge line of cars, probably stretched on for mm, probably five or six miles, honestly. I, like it was, it was that bad. And as I'm sitting there sh- stuck in this line of cars, it occurs to me that that crash happened right about the time that we would have been passing through. Huh. My miracle that day was those slow people. My husband not, my husband keep it, having the car seats in the back of his car. My miracle that day was the fact that I was late. And we get to think about miracles this way and realize that they do not. I have I have yet to see a miracle come my way uh, with flowers <laughs> and fluff and cotton candy and sweetness. No, every miracle I've ever experienced always had a degree of pain at the beginning because the pain is the shift point. It is the point where we change, where we persevere, where we push through. Or it is the point where we stop. And if we stop, it stops our growth. See, when I was going through my trauma and believing that I was a victim, like that was totally something I took on as my character description. If you look in the dictionary next to the word Aaron, you will see giant victim. Okay, that's literally the way I felt about my life, guys. And I think, you know, a lot of you can relate to that. I think a lot of you can relate to that feeling that I am the victim. But um, I want you guys to know it's not true. If you begin to think differently, you can actually start to see that somebody can victimize you, yes. But whether or not you believe you're a victim or not is the key ingredient. And if you don't believe me about that, check in with Elizabeth Smart. Go follow her. She will teach you the very exact same thing, and that is the thing that is saving her sanity to this day. So back to this. See, when I was in pain, I believed I had to stop. I couldn't move forward. I couldn't progress. I was damned, in a sense. That's what the word damnation means, is unable to progress. And I was really struggling because I wanted so many things and they just seemed like they were just outside of my reach. And I was so crippled from what my husband was doing with his porn addiction and the way other people around me were treating me that I felt like I had to stop them or try to control them in some way first for me to finally be able to move forward. But trying to control someone is a whole lot like hurting cats. It does not work very well. It just doesn't. And you end up feeling more and more frustrated. You end up feeling more and more despondent, and it becomes your obsession. It's all you can do is sit there and focus on trying trying to control another person like how do i control them to finally give me peace and that's what the victim mentality gives us when we start to believe that we're a victim we are the victim 
poor, poor me. That's where it lands us every single time without fail. And if you're listening to this, I want better for you. So let's talk about some of this pain. How can we be grateful for it? Well, the analogy I like to learn, like to give is how we can be grateful for debt. Okay? This constant hovering in our lives, this constant, oh my gosh, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money in our lives, right? We can be grateful for debt. If we sit back and use it as simple feedback. If we look at the pain points and we say, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this? How can I learn from this? What is what how is this in my life? What can I how can I use this to grow? How can I use this debt as a as a brick to my staircase? Where I stick it in the staircase and I literally step up and over it. This is the what this is what it means to grow past it, guys. And you have the ability literally to grow past things. If you right now your your trauma, you know, or the debt or whatever it is might seem huge and overbearing. And you are like, I don't know how to even scale this mountain, right? But once you scale that mountain and now you're at the top looking down, the things that were giant while you were down at the bottom, now look small. Very small. And it starts by learning how to climb. And the first thing you got to ask yourself is, how can I be grateful for this? Be open to it. You have to be open to the fact that there is something you can be grateful for in there. Like, I have to learn to budget. I have to learn where my budget is leaking, bleeding out. What are the things that are happening to me that are causing me to be in debt, constantly in debt. Okay, cool. Your budget is airtight. There are no leaks, but yet you're still in debt. Okay. What do I need to do or how do I need to grow so that way I am no longer in debt? For me, My growth is making sure that I am staying within a budget. Sometimes I struggle with that. For you, it could possibly be saying, okay, what skills do I have that are marketable? How can I budget my time? What do I know? What do I need to know? What can I create? And thinking this way, guys, helps you start to become a creator. And when you can become a creator, you can create opportunities for yourself, constant opportunities for yourself, where anytime you find yourself in a difficult situation, you can always create a way out. So how do you feel about boundaries? It's a legitimate question. A lot of people come to me really struggling with this concept. They often feel guilty for setting boundaries or they're not sure about even what a boundary is. 
you know, they've heard the term, set the boundary, things like that. But that's really confusing for them because it's not something that's well taught in our society nowadays, right? They know the boundaries are really important to having healthy, constructive, supportive, and wonderful relationships. But why? And oftentimes, they also know that they feel like their boundaries are being violated, but they can't quite pinpoint what the boundary is that's being violated. That's why I've created the Clarifying and Creating Your Boundaries free PDF. You can find out what your boundaries are, how to tune in to what the boundary needs to be, and how to effectively create and communicate your boundary so that way you stay in this place that respects you respects the other person but also gives you the confidence in your boundaries so that way you stop being gaslighted disrespected and unseen so having your boundaries really clear gives you a voice and also helps the other person stay in accountability with themselves so that's not a role that you have to take on anymore So if you are ready to really have clear boundaries, to really understand what your role is in the boundary, and to give yourself some safety and some protection against people that might try to gaslight you or are just being disrespectful, go grab my Creating and Clarifying Your Boundary PDF at ErinAndersonTheTraumaCoach.com. And while you're there, let's schedule a call with me. Come have a chat with me so that way I can really, really help you master this particular skill, creating boundaries, clarifying the boundary, communicating that boundary, and so that way I can also help you have relationships that show up to support you, cherish you, and love you. When I was worried about money and debt and things, I mean, I had two little boys at that point. And I actually, you know, I went to school to be an elementary teacher, but I couldn't go back to teaching because I had my two little boys. I wanted to be home and raise them and take care of them. Now I have four more kids, you know, six total. And um, but back then there weren't a lot of online opportunities for teaching. There weren't, I didn't have the know-how how how to start my business and to get in and start coaching with with trauma. Um, I didn't have the ability to take on clients at that point. So I started making greeting cards. People wanted greeting cards, um, like baptism cards, uh, baby blessing cards, things like that, that um, my town didn't have. And so I started finding a need and filling it and finding out how I how my creative abilities could shift that from there i started learning how to like like how to bank on what i knew how to create um knickknacks how to create things that people wanted And now I run two businesses, an online teaching business that is pretty well booked full and an online coaching business where I am actually still accepting clients to help heal from betrayal trauma. And it's a fabulous thing that I can do this. And I still get to work from home. I still get to be a mom. I still take care of my kids. And they know that they can come and get me if they need to. That's why you hear them oftentimes in my podcast is because I'm always at home taking care of them, which is a fabulous blessing. I was able to, I'm able to earn a a pretty good living from home and be able to still raise my kids at the same time without having to leave. That's a blessing. That is what I wanted and I've been able to create it. But it started with me learning from my pain point, my debt. That's one example. Another example is how I learned to be grateful, believe it or not, for my husband's addiction. 
how I learned to be grateful for the abuse that my mom, my grandma, and other people maybe had given me. And I know a lot of family members are listening to this. So again, let me just tell you, I love my mom. I love my grandma. I love my husband. Um, but no relationship is without its flaws. Even the relationships people have with me, I have flaws. Therefore, the relationships have flaws. Always will. Always will. But without those flaws, we can't learn and we can't grow together. Part of building a tight-knit relationship with people, and I will say this, my relationship with my mom and my grandma is far better than it ever has been because I learned to grow past those problems. And not every relationship is going to stay in your life. That is true. Some will leave because they cannot handle the growth. My mom and my grandma, bless their ever-loving hearts, my husband, bless his ever-loving heart, wanted me in their life enough that we all grew past it. But it started with me saying, how can I be grateful for this? Without those relationships, guys, without those pain points, I would not have understood the need for God in my life. I would not have understood how to bring him in to make him such an essential relationship in my life. And I wouldn't have understand that he is my essential, my first relationship, and that if I would put all the time, effort, and energy that I've been putting into my trauma into him instead. Like, what would the possibilities be? That pain point got me to this point. It got me looking for a way out, and I found it. And that way out created the person that is behind this microphone today, and I am super proud of her. Guys, the thing is, is my mom, my grandma, and my husband showed up exactly the way I needed them to because it was them that helped hone who I am today. And because of who I am today and the fact that I learned boundaries, I learned love, I learned what, who, who I am, who God created in this fabulous human being, it is that whole thing you can hear my kids in the background sorry guys but it is that whole thing that gave me the ability to turn around and shift my relationship with them and they grew to the challenge too and every single time I'm with my family now we all grow to that challenge and we can become tighter and tighter I realized the rocks that I had been carrying around, blaming my family for those rocks. Yes, they may have put them in the backpack, but it was me that chose to continue to carry them. Dropping the rocks helped me hike that mountain. It helped get me into a spiritual, mental, and emotional state that is strong. And it's literally what it means to make weak things become strong unto us. And it doesn't happen by expecting the other person to make the change. It happens first with us changing from pain to gratitude. Gratitude is the balm of healing. It is the balm that gets you the relationship that you want. And it is literally your ticket out of trauma. I'm going to say that again because this is so important. Gratitude is literally the ticket out of your trauma. 
because now you can see once you start learning how to be grateful for things and you start asking yourself on a daily basis, like, how can I be grateful? What can I be grateful? So, yeah, guys. Gratitude is your ticket out. Learning how to be grateful for the things that maybe bringing, are bringing you pain are the things that are driving you to find a way out, to find that door. Don't just sit in it. Ask yourself today, what can I be grateful for today? Maybe it's your kids that are yelling and screaming in the background while you're trying to make a podcast. Maybe because, you know, without that ability, the without my kiddos, you know, they, they drive a lot of what I do. That yelling and screaming tells me that they're alive and well and happy. Even though I do have to stop in the middle of a podcast and tell them, please, guys, be quiet. I am podcasting. Even though I have to do that, I can still sit back for a minute and be grateful and say, you know what? They're alive and well and happy. And they're creating a relationship with each other and loving each other because they're being silly. I'm grateful for the extra weight I have because I can recognize that my body is telling me I need to change. I can recognize that my body is so wise that it tells me, hey, I'm struggling. I am doing everything I can to keep you okay and healthy and and going forward, but the pain and the extra weight are signs that I need to make a, a, a change. I need to shift something. And so it sets me on the journey of changing, shifting, so that way I can have a physical body that shows up for me in a different way. <clears throat> How can I be grateful for the trauma I've gone through? Without it, I would not know what I know. I wouldn't be able to help people the way I do. I wouldn't be able to show up in a space of love. And I wouldn't be able to understand that this is my mission and my purpose. To help other women and other families that have gone through the hell I did and are going th- that are going through it right now. I wouldn't be able to sit down and teach them that the key point is gratitude. For the very thing that you are wishing away. Because the gratitude that changes our thought processes. And once we change our thought processes, we can change our emotions. Because our emotions are driven by our thoughts. Once we change the emotions, all of a sudden we have a plan of action. And once we have a plan of action, now we can change the result. So guys, gratitude. It is huge. It's easy to be grateful for the things that you want. The $100 bill that just showed up in your life. The new couch you just bought. It's easy to be grateful for those things. But you can absolutely be grateful for the things that are hard in your life. Because once... You start looking for how you can be grateful. If you're open to this and asking, how can I be grateful for this? And being willing 
to allow it to shift you and where you're standing, how you're thinking, then I promise you a miracle happens. I never thought I'd be at the place I'm at with my relationships. Now, guys, it is an absolute miracle. But miracles do not happen without pain first, and we cannot shift the pain without gratitude. Anyway, happy, happy Thanksgiving, you guys. I hope you have a fabulous time with your family. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Next week, we are definitely going to be talking about boundaries and love and how we can show up in that way. We can show up with loving boundaries and how they don't get broken. Okay. Have a happy Thanksgiving, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to be awesome.